supernova explosions is the most violent event in the entire universe. But what does it actually take from a star to go from this to this? So in order to understand what causes a supernova explosion, there are two things that you need to understand first. The first thing is, what exactly keeps a star in balance? Well, there are three main forces at play here. First of all, of course, we have gravity. The star has a mass, it tries to pull itself and collapse itself together from gravity. But of course, it's also like made out of a plasma, or basically a gas that has a gas pressure, and that gas pressure pushes outwards, trying to counteract the gravity. And then the third force is simple like light pressure. As you know, when we've been talking, theorizing about making these big, big solar sails, light has impulse, and that impulse can be converted into direct force. And that happens big time in stars, and that is the final force that from the fusion in the core, as that light from the, that's produced in the fusion core of the star is pushed outwards, that light pressure is also a force that we need to consider when we are talking about what keeps a star in its equilibrium. The second thing you need to know about stars before we can talk about supernovas is the stellar topography. Most stars, most stars, consist of a fusion burning core and a more passive envelope. So really only the, the, the core of the star is where fusion happened and you have a large envelope that can vary in size actually, it depends on the star, but, but you have an envelope around it that will not have any, uh, any fusion, it will just be hot plasma. And, and it's important that you understand the interplay between these two regions in a star, how they interact with each other. If you imagine a star was losing its, its fusion capabilities, it was running out of fuel, um, it would begin to, uh, to, to collapse, that the core would begin to collapse to start with. As it begins to collapse, it heats up. And that suddenly means that, that the, the core, which has no more hydrogen to burn, will begin to burn heavier material and there will be a shell around it that will now be, be heated up due to the core collapsing. It will heat up the star around it. It will heat up the envelope where we can then begin to see hydrogen burning like a shell around the core. So you have one fusion process going on in the center of heavy materials and then lighter materials in a shell around it. And this means that now you have a much bigger and you have a much more violent fusion burning process, which is you're burning two materials now. And that means that all of, this, all of a sudden, to so start with, when the core collapses, that increases the heat, heats up the outer, outer core, and increases the fusion rate um, of the star. And all this actually pushes the outer layer outwards. So that means when the core contracts, the outer layer expands. And that's what happens when a star moves into its giant branch and the expanse becomes, becomes big. And this process can happen many times, where first it, it, it produces hydrogen to helium and then helium to carbon, carbon to oxygen and so forth. It keeps going and you can get these like layers like an onion with different types of shell burning happening with lighter and lighter materials as you go out. And eventually what will happen is that the outer layers will get completely expelled away from the star and, and you will just be left with the core that will just sit there and, uh, and it, the fusion process will stop. So now it's just the, the gravity and the pressure that finds an equilibrium and just sits there, no fusion, it's hot and just emits that normal thermal radiation as it slowly cools down over many, many, many years. So now that you've got the basics down, we can begin to talk about supernova explosions. And there exists multiple different types of, of supernova. The most famous one is probably the type 1A. And they're famous because they are considered a standard candle. That means they, um, they shine with a very well-known luminosity, so we can actually use it for distance. Uh, calculations. I have a separate video about that, so go and, and get subscribed if it's not out already, it will be very soon. But anyway, type 1 supernova is when you have a white dwarf in a binary system. So you've had a binary system, one star has died, that would be the heaviest that dies first, it shed its outer layer and we're left with this non-fusioning hot core that just sits there. But as it sits with a binary companion, it's going to be sucking material from that neighboring star over to the white dwarf and thereby slowly raising its, um, its mass. And as its mass increases, so does its, uh, uh, its gravitational pull. And we shall see, gravitational pull means it collapses, that means it heats up. And as it begins to heat up, when it hits around 1.4 times the mass of our sun, just the core, then all of a sudden carbon fusion kicks in. 
and this kicks in very, very rapidly. And as this carbon fusion, we know it's already contracting and heating up, but as this uh, carbon fusion starts, all of a sudden we get the pressure outwards, but we also get a rapid increase in the core temperature. I guess there's only a core left, so just the star temperature at this point, rapidly increasing, thereby furthering in, uh, uh, increasing the fusion rate increasing the, the, the temperature even further until you get into the uh, to oxygen fusion as well, which again helps to even further like accelerate the heating up and, and further accelerate the fusion rate. So this whole process just runs out of control until the insta entire star just explodes. But as you can see here, because mass is gradually added to the star, once it hits that tipping point, that means that when a, a type 1 supernova explodes, they're going to be almost identical every time. There might be a slight difference in the, the core's composition that can affect it, but we know the mass of this thing very, very accurately when it explodes, and that means that's why we can use them as stand-up candles. Again, different video about that. Uh, either it's already out or it's gonna be out very soon. So this is what's called a thermal runaway supernova. The other types of supernova is what's called a core collapse supernova. And these are type 1b, 1c, and type 2, are all core collapse supernova. So we talked about this shell burning. For very heavy stars, this process with building more and more shells can continue all the way until the, um, until the core consists of iron. So it just keeps burning heavy and heavier elements, like hydrogen becomes helium, becomes carbon, becomes oxygen. It keeps going up to heavier and heavier elements until we reach iron. Iron cannot fuse. So that just, you end up with this iron dense core. And that means all of a sudden we have constantly adding more and more layers to it, but suddenly the core cannot fuse anymore. We only have the, um, the shells um, that are doing the, uh, the fusion burning. But these shells, they continue to burn and they continue just to take materials, create them to heavier and heavier that falls in. And, and that means that iron core of the star just gets heavier and heavier. And, and, and again, as there's nothing really pushing out, we have some thermal energy pushing out, but we have gravity and gravity is gonna win this one and just keeps collapsing that core. And it actually keeps collapsing until what you reach with what's called a nucleus density. That means that the density of the, of the stellar core is the same as the density of a single atom, of the core of a single atom. What effectively that means, because those two densi densities are identical, that means that those atom nucleus are physically pushed together. So they are actually, normally there are huge amounts of weights, that, like empty space in between atoms, and even there's electrons too. But now this is just pressed together so tightly that you actually begin to get electron-proton interactions. So the electrons and the protons begin to interact and you begin to create this, this neutralization of the core. But again, as this happens, as you reach this density, it just cannot get denser than it is at this point. And it just stops the collapse because there's physically no space for the, for the atoms to, to be pushed further together. And that creates a massive shock wave that just, it deacts the outer layer of, uh, of the star. All those layers that are still sitting out there doing their shell burning just get ejected at massive, massive speeds and it creates um, the supernova. What we're left with here is either a neutron star. Now you know why it's called a neutron star because, well, it's mostly neutrons because it was so dense when it got created that all the protons and electrons interact, created neutrons and, and huge amount of energy in that process too. So while all these core collapses are mechanically the same, we distinguish them based on how much of the outer shell was left when the explosion happened, because that changes the light spectrogram we get from the explosion. If the outer hydrogen layer was stripped away from the star before, um, before the explosion, so that means the outer shell that was normally doing hydrogen burning is gone, that could be maybe there was a companion star, or maybe there was some stellar winds from the star itself that pushed it away. If that outer layer has disappeared, it's a 1b. If both the outer hydrogen layer and the second helium burning layer is gone before the explosion, then it's a 1c. But if nothing is, is lost, if all the, um, all the shells all the way up to, uh, to hydrogen is still active and is still burning at the time of the explosion, we consider it a, um, a type 2 supernova. And if you have a topic you want me to talk about in the future video, 
a comment section below. I'm always happy to take suggestions for, for, for content and for future, future videos. So if you have something you want me to try and explain, post it below and then subscribe so you get a notification when the video is eventually made. The types of stars that can go supernova, they are bright. They need to have a mass of at least eight times that of our sun. There were a group of men that during the night would take pictures and when you do it back then, you would, you would have these like photoreactive glass plates. 